Back in 1967, Canada's centennial year, the small Nova Scotia town of Picto had special reason to celebrate. The provincial government clinched a deal with an American multinational company that would create a lot of work for a lot of people. But the deal with Scott Paper would also pollute the water in an area known locally as a paradise. In its eagerness to sign, Nova Scotia agreed to something almost unheard of in the pulp and paper industry the province agreed to take care of the water pollution. 22 years later, the decision to turn a small harbor into an industrial lagoon has come back to haunt the politicians. The provincial tourism people call the stretch of beaches along Nova Scotia's North Shore the Sunrise Trail. Out to sea across the Northumberland Strait lies Prince Edward Island. If the wind's blowing right, from 20 kilometers away, the islanders can smell the hydrogen sulfide steaming out of Boat Harbor in Nova Scotia. We don't know what's in Boat Harbor. Uh, it, was, it was beautiful once. It was, a, it was a paradise. Nothing lives in Boat Harbor now. At one time, it was full of ocean life. The treatment facility at Boat Harbor is an excellent treatment facility and I believe is doing the job that it's supposed to be doing. The job is cleaning up after Scott Maritimes, a subsidiary of Scott Paper, the world's largest makers of toilet paper. For the last 22 years, Scott has been flushing its industrial waste into Boat Harbor. Almost everywhere else, the company spends millions to build huge containers for its effluent, but not here. In 1967, the Nova Scotia government simply turned Boat Harbor into a lagoon. It was part of the offer to Scott. The province would take care of the mess. Boat Harbor filters the waste so the water doesn't kill fish when it flows out of the lagoon into the ocean. The effluent does pass federal tests, but not far away, Lighthouse Beach is deserted. It's completely useless now. No one swims there anymore. We used to dig clams right behind our house. We don't do that anymore. We don't know what's in those clams. Big, expensive egg beaters churn up the top few feet of water to restore the oxygen. It cuts the smell, but only slugs survive in this water. Scott mashes up trees and turns them into pulp, the raw material for paper. It's dirty business. Chemicals cook the wood. It creates a lot of polluted water. 22 million gallons a day, every day, for the last 22 years. When Boat Harbor was a beautiful place, most of it belonged to the Mi'kmaq Indians. In the 60s, the province convinced them to sell their rights for $65,000 and a promise the water would stay clean. Then Scott opened the pipeline to Boat Harbor. In his 99 years, Mike Denny never saw anything like it. They killed every fish out there, oh, about the next day out there, all along the shore. Dead fish, smelled seals and everything all around. They killed them right away, out the overnight. The Mi'kmaq Indians say they were tricked into making a bad deal. They're suing in federal court. What you're looking at here is the outfall from the settling ponds. Dan McDonald works for the band. He organized the lawsuit. I just got a really good whiff of this stuff. I mean, how do you, how would you describe that, that smell? It's hard to describe, isn't it? Oh, it's, I'm yeah, sure yeah, if we stood where we're at very long, <laughs> we'd, be, uh, we'd be sick, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it is absolutely, to, to conjure up the idea of 22 million gallons a day, every day that the mill is in operation is, yeah. it's a difficult thing to do. Looks like something that would boil up from the bowels of hell, eh? Exactly. It smells like something that might come from there, too. <laughs> All the foam collects at the other end. Everything else flows into the part of Boat Harbor called the Stabilization Pond. It used to be quite a productive place for, for various species of fish, and shellfish, and lobster, and oysters. And it looks quite nice. It really doesn't give you any indication as to what the stuff really looks like. The brown water sits in Boat Harbor for about three weeks before it's released into the Northumberland Strait. 
trails of white foam show the movement of treated effluent as it washes out to sea. It's all perfectly legal, all within the federal standards that dictate what can be dumped into the ocean. Standards that haven't been changed in 17 years. But the mill means work for a lot of people. Sacrificing Boat Harbor was the price. It seemed like a good trade. 300 acres for 500 jobs. Nova Scotia's Minister of Industry, Don Cameron. I don't think it was a disregard for the environment. It was, it was a realization that we wanted to, uh, to uh, keep people uh, in this area. And in order to do that, you have to have, to have work. And uh, it was an effort to, uh, to get industry to locate here. And, uh, and yes, um, uh, you know, the only way to avoid making mistakes is not doing anything. Today, the province of Nova Scotia doesn't have any problem with what's happened here. They seem to have forgotten that this was ever a place for fish and birds. What was once called Boat Harbor is now called a waste treatment center. Just by changing the name, they made any problem with pollution disappear. Nova Scotia has thousands and thousands and thousands of miles of coastline and many very scenic tourist attractions and places of interest. And Boat Harbor is not one of them. At the Provincial Department of Environment, Dennis Ryan's wondering what all the fuss is about. The, the color of the water is about the color of weak tea, I would suggest. Would you agree with that? Some of the stuff I saw, it looked strong like it had been tea? <laughs> strong tea. <laughs> we have in Nova Scotia uh, brownish waters naturally. It's called good Nova Scotia bog water. And its color is not unlike that. And you can see examples of that around the South Shore as you, as you drive and uh, in various other areas in Nova Scotia. But this is no ordinary bog water. The federal government suspects it contains dioxins that are seeping into the ocean. This family of chemicals causes birth defects and cancer in lab animals. No one knows what it does to people. Scientists discovered the process that Scott and similar mills used to bleach pulp creates dioxins. Next year, the federal government will test all these mills across Canada. We will not tolerate polluters in Nova Scotia. The environment was on everyone's mind during Nova Scotia's fall election. I, I don't blame you people. If I lived next to it, I wouldn't be happy either. And I wanted... During the campaign, Cameron tried to explain he committed half a million dollars to upgrade Boat Harbor. That's not fit to put in your, in that, in your hand. And if it is, why okay. don't you hold it? Because there are toxins, dioxins, et cetera, et cetera, in that. What is the government doing about it? Another well, study. No, no, it was, a, it was to get an expert to give his recommendations how to improve the situation here. Quite frankly, we don't really trust your government studies. Mr. Cameron, if, if you, can, if you, can, if you can, come up with the Well, that's exactly what we're doing. All we, all we hear is your mouth going and nothing else. Mary Gorman, a Toronto woman who grew up in Picto, rallied the locals and Cameron took the heat. And it was frustrating because it was very difficult. It's an emotional issue. And you, all you have to do is take one look at Boat Harbor. And um, it's very difficult to get people to listen to the facts. Forgive my cynicism, but as far as I'm concerned, the government is, is totally kowtowing to industry at the expense of the people. And uh, I just don't believe them. I mean, it's, 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 it's what I see. I mean, I knew that water before it had that junk in it. I knew it in its natural state. And you can't tell me there isn't something very seriously wrong. The facility of Bone Harbor meets, uh, meets all the standards for pulp mill. But the fact is that uh, it doesn't meet the standards of the people. Um, simply put, the people are not satisfied with the, with the end result. They're not satisfied with the water leaving the treatment facility. Uh, neither am I. It's pretty scary when you don't know what you're dealing with. Mary Hain and her neighbors are not fighting for a wholesale cleanup of Boat Harbor itself. They want answers about what's getting out of the lagoon into the ocean. Their standards were drawn up 17 or 18 years ago. And this is, this is the standards that they're trying to follow today. It's only a matter of time before it's too late as far as we're concerned as fishermen. What do you mean matter of time? Well, you just can't keep dumping stuff out into the ocean. 
sooner or later it's gonna it's gonna catch up to us. Everywhere else in the world they've done this, it's caught up to them. The big fear I have is that I don't know what's in the water. I guess no one really does. They they haven't done enough testing to tell us what, what we're dealing with. Scott keeps a low profile. Boat Harbor is not the company's worry. It belongs to the province. Company president, Jerry Byrne. Are you surprised by the concern that's been shown by the local citizens over Boat Harbor some 22 years after the fact? There certainly has been a lot of concern, and, uh, but uh, when one considers that it is in fact doing the job it, it was intended to do, then I am rather surprised, yes. I have to say to you that the bottom line is that the uh, system is functioning and it does what it was designed to do. But at most Scott Mills, the company is left to clean up after itself. Its record isn't universally good. In fact, a reputable American environmental group says of the major pulp companies in the United States, Scott is one of the worst offenders. Yet at one plant, millions of dollars have been spent to give Scott one of the most effective and efficient waste treatment systems anywhere. A lesson in what can be done, even in a state with little history of environmental concerns. You still got the line? Get the line and you'll have it. This is Mobile, Alabama. There's not much of an environmental movement here. It's a poor area, economically depressed. The emphasis is on jobs, just as it was in Nova Scotia 20 years ago. Scott Paper built its biggest plant here. The pulp mill is two and a half times the size of its Canadian cousin and a decade older. But over the years, the company has spent $60 million on pollution control equipment. Downriver of the plant, the U.S. government suspects there may be dioxins here too. Still, Scott is thought to be an industry leader by Dr. George Crozier, a marine biologist with a reputation for being a radical environmentalist. What I find locally with Scott, and I'm interested in all the aspects of coastal zone management, is that they are actually recycling a much of their paper mill waste and turning it into energy of all things. And so much, they make their own electricity by burning the solids from their processing. And the thing that amazes me is I find myself in the supermarket buying Scott paper products because I have seen the effort that they have made. And that's with, with very little pressure. And they think it's a good business. I mean, they're saving energy. They're making money out of the deal by saving waste. I applaud that. But in Nova Scotia, Scott doesn't recycle any waste. The 22-year-old deal puts the burden of cleaning up on provincial shoulders. And I think the people at that time uh, made the best possible deal they, they could. Uh, and it's easy to look back and criticize, but uh, maybe we should try to walk in those shoes for a bit and we wouldn't be so critical. Sooner or later, somebody's going to have to clean it up, you know. If we don't clean it up, our kids are going to have to clean it up. <laughs>